So yesterday, Coach Taylor said something very important. He said about how our recent success coming off our bye week, that that is what this team is about, right? Come off our bye week, play successful, play good, you know, really show off. Well, we're coming off our bye week. So I thought today we could go ahead and take a look at, you know, the Coach Zach Taylor era, the Marvin Lewis era, which technically is 2003 to 2018. But we're going to be looking at four years apiece because obviously we've had four years of Zach Taylor and we're going to be looking at the last four years with Marvin Lewis and see how successful are we coming off our bye week. Because as of late, we're 15 and 7 the last two seasons coming off our bye week. And that has sparked a lot, a lot of conversation when it comes to not only Coach Taylor talking about it, but a lot of people saying, listen, we're about to play the 49ers, and we are a very, very good team coming off our bye week. So last season in 2022, we came off our bye week, and yeah, we won eight straight games. Just back to back to back to back to back. And then we beat the Ravens in the wild card. We beat the Buffalo Bills in the divisional. That was 10 straight wins. And then questionably lost to the uh, Chiefs in the championship. If not for the Chiefs in the championship, that would be 11 straight wins after our bye week. And then, of course, we won the Super Bowl. That would be 12 straight wins after our bye week. Which, you know, that's really the mentality of this team is, you know, second half adjustments. Second half of the season adjustments. That's what we have to do moving forward, especially this year, because we have the second hardest schedule in the NFL for the remainder games we have. So we're going to have to really step up and show off. And again, you know, look at the last two years, right? Steelers, that's not an easy matchup. Ravens, that's not easy. Chiefs, that's not easy. Um, Browns, that's never easy, let's be honest. Bills, that's not easy. But Patriots, Bucks. Titans. Those are the only three teams you could even make the argument that those teams will be the easy games. And even then, all three of those games are trap games. So, and we played those games tough. So again, like I said, at the end of the day, you know, we had a hard schedule last year, right? This year, we're still going to have a very difficult schedule. Five really difficult teams. Ravens, uh, 49ers, Bills, Chiefs, and Browns. We still have a couple easier games, I will say. Colts is an easier game. Vikings, although the Vikings just beat the 49ers. Um, Texans, that's a little bit easier, but not too much. Jaguars, you know, it's going to be tough, guys. It's going to be tough the rest of the season. But last season, we went 8-0 coming out of our bye week. What are we doing in 2021? Coming off our bye week, we went ahead and won our first two games versus the Raiders and the Steelers. Then we lost two games. Then we won three games. Then we lost the Browns in the final game of the season. Of course, that's a record of what? Two, three, five, and three. So five and three off our bye week, which again, you know, puts us at that record I talked about at the beginning of this video. Which again, <clears throat> not bad at all, you know? But at the end of the day, you know, that is really where it stops. <laughs> and what I mean by stops, I mean, that's where things kind of go downhill the other years of coming off our bye week from 2015 to 2020. Now, of course, we got Joe in 2020. We didn't have Joe in 2019. <clears throat> and, you know, we definitely wouldn't. We're in the best quarterback situation in 2019 and before that, right? There was years, obviously, yes, we have had years in the past where we were a great quarterback situation. But as of late, no. Other than Joe, he's been our best option. So let's talk about 2020, the second year of Coach Taylor. Coming off our bye week, we lost a total of five straight games in a row. Um, went ahead and won two games for Seals and Texans and finally losing to the Ravens in the last game of the season. And it's, you know, again, the last two years, how successful this has been, you know, you really look at it and you're like, okay, well, you know, at least we have something to go off of, which again, very successful. But, you know, before that, it was uh, very much a hit or miss coming off a of bye week. Now, again, you know, keep the tradition alive last two years. Let's make it a third year, right? That's why this game, again, is so important in so many different ways. You know, if I list off all the ways why this game upcoming, you know, versus the um, 49ers is so important, 
I would lose fingers of my hands be how many freaking reasons this is important. But this is another reason. It's coming off our bye weekend just being ready to go, right? 2019. We lost the first three games. We beat the Jets. We lost the next three games. And then we beat the Browns. Yeah. 2018, it gets rougher, guys. We lost, what is that? Three, five games in a row. Beat the Raiders and then lost the last two. Keep in mind, 2019 and 2018, and before that, there was 18 uh, weeks in the schedule. Oh, I'm sorry, 17 weeks in the schedule, 16 games. So just keep that in mind. There was less games. Week 17, or 2017, not week 17, 2017, we lost to the Steelers, beat the Colts, lost to the Jags and Titans, beat the Broncos and Browns, lost to the Steelers, Browns, and Vikings, and then beat the Lions and beat the Ravens. So, not too horrendous, kind of ups and downs. And again, that was part of the Marvin Lewis era. And then 2016, we lost three games. 1-2, lost 2-1-1. And our final 2015, we won 2, lost 2, 1-2, lost 1, 1-1, one, one, lost 1, 1-1. One, one. Now, we have never played the 49ers after coming off a of bye week. And honestly, you know, we obviously have never played the 49ers squad they have right now. Um... And it does look like they're going to have Christian McCaffrey for this game. So it's definitely going to be a tougher game. You know, obviously we saw last night the Vikings demolished. For the most part, I know it was cl a closer game in the end. But the Vikings dominated the 49ers without Jay Jettis. Obviously the Niners didn't have Debo Samuel or Trent Williams. But the Niners did have Christian McCaffrey. But without Jay Jettis, they still were able to dominate that 49ers defense. And I think we got that kind of aspect from P.J. Walker, from, you know, Kirko last night, that, yes, that 49ers defense is beatable. Their secondary especially is beatable. But it's going to be a tough game. Now, I'm hoping and, you know, praying here we can continue our success coming off a of bye week and get another W. We can make this three years in a row. Because, again, there's so many different factors that we have to push ourselves here into, you know, this momentum shift, I will say, this momentum factor of going to the rest of the season. Because we can't feel the way we've been feeling, you know, so far this season because we've been down, let's be honest. The, the, the morale around the team and, again, a lot of the players has been, we're getting a butt kicked, we're not doing good, we're not playing good, we're not executing correctly, you know, fingers are being pointed left and right. And that's not how you win. You know, you got to come together. You got to be a team. You got to be one unit. And at the end of the day, you know, losing sucks, but you have to use it as motivation to win. Because if you don't, you're going to just find yourself in the same problem, the same issues over and over and over and over again. And you're never going to solve the problems. So that's kind of where we're finding ourselves now when it comes to, you know, the first part of the season, but the good thing is we won the last three game or two games in a row, right? Back to back. So that does give us a little bit of hope moving forward. Okay, let's calm down. We rattled off some wins. Let's just continue to be successful here moving forward and we will be fine. But again, like I said, it's easier said than done, right? When you look at our schedule. But overall wise, this is kind of where we've been, you know, so far in the Zach Taylor era, it... I guess has been better. I want to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 wins. And again, in a four year stretch here 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's very close between the Marvin Lewis era and the Zach Taylor era. But keep in mind also, Joe Burrow did miss half of 2020 with. Um, his injury. So, there's a lot of things to take in consideration. <laughs> I'm not trying to make excuses at the end of the day, but, you know, there are factors. But again, you know, 2015 and 2018, well, we didn't have really that great of a quarterback. So, there's always factors you could put in there, out there, right? That you could say, well, this happened because of this, and this is why we weren't good here, and this is why this happened. There's so many different factors. But at the end of the day, the only factor that matters right now is San Francisco 49ers in Who Day Nation in the jungle coming to our stadium this Sunday and getting that W. And when triple zero is on that clock, we walk away with the championship, with the win, and we're moving on 
to none other than the Buffalo Bills. I'll see you guys next one. Peace out.